right guys, progress continues on our twin turbo Vortec 4200 swapped Datsun 260Z. But before I go over the progress that we have made off camera, I want to mention something that I totally forgot to bring up in the intro video, which you guys saw last. The reason that we are building this car is because one, we want to make the quickest and fastest 4200 powered car that we've ever made. And two, we want to take the car to the No Name Nationals, which is taking place in September at Jeffers Motorsports Park in Sykeston, Missouri. And our goal is to take this car as well as my dad's twin turbo LS powered Nova. If you're at all into the YouTube scene, you should definitely check it out. There's gonna be a lot of fun content creators out there and I'm sure it will be worth your while. So make sure you put that on your calendar if you wanna come out and shake our hands, um, you know, and say hi. Would love to meet some of you guys. Now, on to the progress that we made off camera. So right off the bat, you're gonna notice that some bars have been reworked up here in the front, and we did some lightening of a lot of the chassis up here in the front of the car. Also, we cleaned up some of the stray brackets and that sort of thing to try and make the thing look a little more professional. So another thing that you're gonna notice right off the bat is we have begun our turbo plumbing. Uh, we've started to work on the hot side for the twin turbo setup, and we are going to make a tubular manifold setup. And now that I have the process down, I'm going to give you a more detailed view of how to make your own. So essentially we started with a BMW uh, aftermarket header. I believe it was some Chinese piece of junk. We bought it for like $5 at a flea market and we cut it up for material to basically turn it into our own manifold. All right, your first goal is to try and get everything located. So we have chosen to place the turbos in this configuration, one down low in the front and one up high in the rear. And we want them to both, both face forward and at a slight angle up towards the front. So that's what we have mocked up here. We just made a little stand that you can't see down below here that basically holds the turbo in that orientation. Once you have the turbo where you want it, you have to figure out where you are going to place your collector. Now you gotta make sure that when you fabricate everything that you have room so that you can get a wastegate after the collector. So I am thinking we're gonna place it about here. What we need to do next is we need to start fabricating our first tube and that will sort of locate everything. And then we fabricate our other tubes to that same location. And before you know it, you have an exhaust manifold, kind of like the one we have up here. Alright guys, here is a helpful tip when you're cutting these tubes off. You need to cut the tube off at a square angle and a good way to do that is to get a strip of paper kind of like this and then you wrap it around your tube and you make sure that you keep it square and then you use a marker and you mark the tube and that will give you a nice square cut kind of like this one and then you can cut it with your cutoff wheel and you're good to go. This assumes you don't have a chop saw, which is a much better way to do it. Um, that kind of clamps it in so that it's square, but we don't have one of those, so this is how we do it. All right, now that we have our first tube basically fabricated, we need to mock it up in orientation of where we actually want to put it and then we're going to mark the top of the port with a line so that we know where the top is and then we will start to form this tube into the shape of the port. 
Now that I have my mark here, I can now start to crush this into the shape of the port. So I start by sticking it in the vise, and then you basically, you just squish it, kind of like this. And you basically squish it until it's kind of oval shaped, starting to get there. Now, being that it's on a bend like this, it's a little harder to get the bottom to form into that D shape. So you can come to your anvil like this, and you can pound on it with a hammer. Now we're making some progress. <laughs> and you're basically just guessing and checking until the thing fits into the manifold. I'm interrupting. <clears throat> you just keep on squishing it. Yeah, keep squishing. Squishing, squishing, squishing. Is that why you use washers? Washers. And now that you're in, it looks something like this. And then to get it the rest of the way there, take a punch like this one. And you basically hit it like this. Make sure you drop the tube a hundred times. Now I actually have this thing tacked onto the flange, as you can see here. And now that it's tacked on there, now it's gonna be easier to hit it with a hammer and form it the rest of the way to the flange. Then when you're done, you just snap the tacks off and grind them flush. It should look something like that when you're done and now it's formed to the shape of the port. So now we can take it back over to the car and start building the other tubes.
All right, so now that you have your tubes fabricated, what you need to do is you need to tack them all together in between, just like that. And then what you do is you take your uh, collector and you place it over top, like so. And then you mark it all along where the collector intersects with the tubes and then what I like to do is I like to cut all the excess off and then we're going to weld the centers and then we can weld this onto the outside and then we're good to go. Alright, now that we got this all TIG welded up I can kind of show you why we welded all the stuff in here before we welded the collector on. So the reason that we did that was it's really hard to get my TIG torch and some fill rod down in here and weld this up when there's this big cone in the way. So it makes a lot of sense to get all this stuff in here welded up before you uh, weld the outer cone on. Now for the collector, you kind of have to build up the material here in these little uh, crotch areas. And, um, you know, my welds aren't perfect, so don't judge, um, but essentially you just gotta get your uh, fill material in there and build up a little bit of material. And you wanna make sure that when you look in here, it is good and sealed up, cause you don't wanna have any exhaust leaks. And um, once you got that done, you're good to go. And then you trim this to fit for your outlet pipe and form that to the shape of that outlet and um, you're good to go. All right guys, now that we have our turbo flange welded to our tube that will eventually hook up to our turbo header, um, we need to talk about this particular joint here. So it is very common for turbo manifolds to crack right here, uh, basically right next to the weld. And the reason that they crack on this particular joint is because you're welding a thick piece of metal to a thin piece of metal. And in order to get good penetration on the thick piece of metal, you have to give it a bunch of heat. Um, and, you know, you usually uh, make a pretty uh, hot weld onto your tubular manifold here. And it normally cracks right next to the weld where it basically becomes hard um, from excessive heat. Now, it's only allowed to do that because it moves around. Um, so a good way to avoid that is to weld it on the inside and then the tube actually inserts into the flange and that gives it a little bit of extra support in this particular area and then to keep it from uh, moving but not make it so hot that it becomes uh, brittle we're actually going to instead of weld this joint we are going to braze this joint now, traditionally, you would do this braze with a torch, um, you know, some sort of acetylene torch or maybe a propane torch, but a method that a friend of ours taught us is you can actually braze with a TIG torch. So that's what I'm gonna do here in a second. What I have here is some silicon bronze uh, fill wire, and then I can just braze this entire joint, and that will keep this from cracking off of this since there's a lot of stress here because there's a turbo hanging off of this guy here. So um, I'm gonna get this brazed up and we're gonna get it welded onto the car. And when you're done, it looks something like this. A lot of people probably would think, oh, that's just TIG welded. Nope, braze. So now we can get it mocked up for hopefully the final time and get this welded onto here. And then we need to get a wastegate landed on both of the turbo headers. And then once my stainless steel flange arrives, we can get that welded onto there. And voila, we got a twin turbo turbo manifold. Okay guys, as you are welding these, now is a good time to close up any gaps you have on your formed uh, exhaust tubes. So like here, there's a pretty good gap there. So this is a good time to get in here with a punch 
and uh, form this to match the exhaust flange so that you can make a better weld. Alright, we got this thing all welded up inside and it's brazed on the outside. Everything looks good. And now it's time to move on to the wastegate. Now, as we have discussed in my other videos, it is good to come off at an angle, sort of like this, to get proper wastegate control. Ideally, I would like to see actually a little bit more priority flow going to the wastegate, but this is kind of the situation that we are stuck with, so it's what we're going to go with. So basically you have to take a piece of tube and you have to trim and mark and trim and mark until you have a nice tight um, cope, kind of like what this is, so that you can get a nice weld on it. And then you're going to trace it out and then you need to cut out the hole and make sure that it is good and clean in here because you want the uh, exhaust gases to be able to flow out of here efficiently. So um, in order to kind of uh, overcome our maybe less than stellar uh, wastegate placement, we're going to run a little bit larger than um, maybe what uh, most people would run on this type of setup. So we're running two 50 millimeter wastegates and the idea there is to get as good boost control as we can. So I'm going to get this all trimmed out and then get this guy welded on and land my wastegates and then we can start working on the downpipe. Alright, so we probably skipped quite a few steps but from where we left off it is uh, pretty much uh, rinse and repeat. You know, you're basically taking pieces of tubing and lining them up to where you think the exhaust needs to go and matching them up, cutting them off and welding them back together. Basically our arrangement here is we have the two turbo discharges, they come down and then merge into one and come out the side of the car. In order to get this merge point to be easy to line up, I actually 3D printed this little template here. Basically that allowed us to make this uh, particular joint to be very accurate. Then from there we uh, landed the wastegate locations and ran the wastegate tubes out the side of the car as you can see here. So this wraps up the hot side of the turbo setup. Next time you see this car we will be working on the cold side and you probably have already noticed that we've made a little bit of progress there but I'm gonna go over that in the next video. So that's all we have time for today. Make sure you like and subscribe and consider joining the channel by hitting the join button down below. Hopefully we'll be making some noise with this thing in relatively short order. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next one. <sighs> Anytime you get to use the milling machine, you know it's gonna be a good day.